drew everything in sight all his life. It was compulsive, he couldn't not paint or draw. He's an amazing man, he was a one-off. I don't know what it is, but it's something that makes people think, I want that and I like it. This is the landscape that Percy Kelly loved. So I've come to find out more about a prolific artist with an equally incredible life story. He wasn't interested in the chocolate box Lake District, but of the down-to-earth beauty of West Cumbria. So that's where I'm headed. I'm meeting up with Chris, a former art gallery owner. She's researched and written about Percy's life and work. So when did Percy first come to Allenby? He and his wife Audrey, first wife Audrey, moved here in 1958. Uh, they gave up the sub -post, post office in Great Broughton and bought Glen Cottage just around the corner. What was Percy's early life like? Well, the family were very poor. He was born into a family of seven in a very small house in Workington. Very religious family. And he was a twin. Really? Mm. He used the back room as his studio, which is quite a tiny room. And he had a huge printing press in there. And Percy, who was always short of cash, is still remembered in the village shop today. When he used to come in, he used to want it, you know, in exchange for groceries, you know. For, for his paintings. And did you take any of them? No, we didn't, no, but I wish we had now. <laughs> but his time in Allenby came to a swift end one night when he revealed a secret to his wife. She could see a fire flickering and she thought, oh good, Percy's home. There was a strange woman sitting by the fire with her back to her. The woman turned round and it was Percy in her Jaeger dress um, asking for help with his makeup. And she threw him out and locked him out and changed the locks. He never came and lived here again. Throughout the rest of his life, he'd alternate between being Percy and Roberta. My next stop is a short drive cross country to Isle near Cockermouth. I've come to visit an old friend of Percy's who spotted the potential of his work. I thought it was very good because it was so original. And the chief thing about it was it belonged to Cumbria, and he adored Cumbria. Mary was the director of the Abbott Hall Art Gallery in Kendal and exhibited his work in the 1960s. He was fixed on the Lake District, and I think that's been the secret of his success. After the breakup of his marriage, Percy came here to Levens Hall near Kendal with his new partner, Christine. He lived in one of these cottages a few miles from the famous topiary. Mavis Aitchison remembers a prolific artist who refused to cash in on his work. When we came to visit them here in this cottage, we went into the hall and there was a stack of paintings along the hall. I think it was some of the ones that he'd painted when they were in Brittany. They were very highly coloured and floral and they were very attractive. And I said, what are you going to sell? Are you going to sell any of these? No, no. One critic said about Percy that he was one of those artists who believed in his own value and he wanted others to share that high opinion. But he just couldn't come round to selling his artwork in order to achieve it. In other words, he craved recognition. But somehow, he couldn't part with his paintings. He was almost sorry when a painting went. And sometimes he'd actually ask for them back, you know. He'd write to somebody a really nice letter with an illustration on and say, you know, um, I'm really missing that painting. Do you think I could have it back? <laughs> he changed his mind. Yeah. In 1973, Percy and Christine moved to St David's in Wales and then on to Norfolk. And after years of hardship and Percy refusing to sell his work, Christine couldn't take any more. She left him. I think she couldn't stand being so poor. And actually, the frustration of knowing that there was this wealth of, of beautiful art, a really interesting painting, just sitting there, not doing anything. So, with Percy alone and in exile in Norfolk, how did his work find its way back to his home county? 
I'm heading to Kendall in search of answers. Dear Miss David, thank you so much for your letter which arrived today. Your very kind and appreciative words about my work really touched me. It is so rare to hear such compliments, and since I am experiencing the darkest period of my life, I got quite a lift. Percy was replying to Joan David, an art lover from Kendall. She'd been captivated by one of Percy's pictures and wrote to him asking to buy some of his work. It was the start of an enduring friendship. Uh, what was a tentative early beginnings of a few letters going backwards and forwards rapidly developed into something that was almost on a daily basis, at least as far as Percy's letters to mother was concerned. Did you have any idea how many letters there were? Well, no, not until we opened the trunk after my mother's death. Uh, and it turns out that there was something in the region of 1,500 letters in that trunk. And uh, it's amazing because um, mother and Percy Kelly only met four or five times during, uh, during their lives. Dear Mr Kelly, what an amazingly generous person you are. I've been living on air since your most beautiful painted letter arrived. She sent him the stamps, uh, so in other words, he didn't even have to pay for the stamps to keep the correspondence going. And it was his good friend Joan and Chris who rescued the artwork crammed into Percy's tiny Norfolk cottage after his death in 1993. Finally, his work would get a wider audience. In 1994, nobody really knew about him at all. And yet when the catalogue went out, I had a queue right down the hill for those paintings. And every exhibition since then that I've put on of Percy Kelly, there has been a queue outside the door. Now he's hit London. He hit London about three or four years ago. And even last December, one of his paintings of Cornwall sold in Christie's for £4,000. I think he'd be very startled at that now. It's now highly prized. He's even been compared to L.S. Lowry. Talented, troubled, a genius. All words used to describe Percy Kelly. Gone but not forgotten by his beloved Cumbria. Long after his death, interest continues to grow in his work. But then he always knew that would be the case. I cannot paint for monetary gain. I would rather starve than sell one piece of my work. But I know that when I depart this world, people will stop and wonder at the beauty and truth that I have portrayed.